thank you, Lord, for today. Father, we thank you that you are for us and not against us. We thank you that it is good to be in the house of the Lord today. I thank you that the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart is acceptable in your sight. I thank you, God, that you speak through me. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for today. I thank you that your word does say that daily you load us up with benefits. And today there are benefits for us. And goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life. So I ask you to just do what you do best, and that is have your way and flow and speak encouragement and life to all your children in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I love my friends Paul and Patty. I'm always blessed and honored to to be here. You know, there's some places you're like, "Woo, thank the Lord I'm preaching, but thank the Lord I'm going home." <laughs> Come on, people, I'm just being honest. Don't act like nobody's ever gotten on your nerves before. <laughs> but like I love coming here cuz it's family, you know, and it's just awesome and so thank you for that. And I'm just going <laughs> to I I really feel to minister a little bit more on this service than I did on the last one, but I want to um let you know that I have a book here that I wrote. It's a hard cover book so and I collaborated with a group of women Terry Savelle Foy's in here Sandy Shear a bunch of just amazing amazing people and if you're a guy and you're thinking wow that's for women it's not it's actually a journey with Jesus and there's words in here that are encouraging and it's not like you always get a prophecy when you get a book but I normally always hear different page numbers and I just put them in this book and I had several women at least five of them that came up to me today and said oh my gosh all those page numbers remember it's not Christine it's Jesus all those page numbers I went to and they were exactly what I needed to hear so that totally encouraged me you know to believe so you know who knows there might be a page number on there that God really needs to minister to, you know to you on or you want to buy it as a gift for somebody else so I'll be at the back and I'm going to give these a give these a little sign and, and hug your neck okay so it'll be in the back there for you. Write down on um, Matthew 6. That's a scripture reference today. And I just want to start off the bat with praying for people who need healing. Who needs um, healing from weariness right now? Not physical, but just, I just keep hearing like weariness, tired, fatigue. Yes, yes. And, oh, Lord, there's hands everywhere. I just can feel that. I'm like, oh, Lord, <laughs> like, what is this? So we're just going to pray for that right now. So, Lord, I just thank you that you are our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And, Lord, we just charge out weariness in Jesus' name and fatigue in Jesus' name. And, Lord, even some that are just battle weary, we just say no in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I thank you that they can run through a troop and leap over a wall. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit to give them supernatural strength to charge out their, their even just ailments in their physical body, fatigue even in their thoughts, just just natural tired Lord your word says that we can have strength and we have not because we ask not so today I ask for it in Jesus name amen and amen amen it's just important when you don't feel um how many of you know when you feel tired or fatigued you're like oh, oh Lord you ever watch the Charlie Brown movies back in the day wah, 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 wah. yes I'm so dating myself pushing 50 in a few years, but I still like some of the old school stuff. So it's kind of like that when we're hearing the word of God. If you're tired and fatigued, you can't always hear, you know, clearly. But I want God to talk clearly to us, right? I want him to encourage us and strengthen us. And how does he do that? He does it through the word. And Matthew 6, that <laughs> I taught on fr from this morning, is there are some basic practical principles on how to walk in God's word. Have you ever worried about something? And then have you ever worried about something that never even happened? But you know what? It actually did happen. You know why? Because it happened to you. It happened to you because you worried about it, you thought about it, and your body literally began to um, get stressed out or physically deal with it. Oh, thank you so much. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, my gosh, you worry about it, you worry about it, worry about it, and then it comes and it never happens. You're like, man, what a waste of time that was. We worry. So it actually did happen to you. And the Bible says in Matthew 6, 25, I believe it is, and how many of you can add anything to your life by worrying? The Lord takes care of everything. Can you add anything to your life by worrying? You just feel miserable. You know, you feel like you, some people get diarrhea. They're like, oh, I worry so much. I'm in the bathroom so much. It's because you're worrying. Just take worry out of the equation. And it's easier for me to say, but when you're walking through something, and I know, I've walked through some horrible things in my life, circumstances that I just thought, oh, my goodness, Jesus, you better show up on the scene. Because I don't know how I'm going to get out of this mess. I feel sad. I feel broken. I mean, all the toxic, deadly emotions. You name it, I will own it all. But you know what I've learned is sometimes it's that little teeny step of faith, the baby step, where you just got to go, I'm going to be intentional to stay right here in this moment and get myself into the Word of God. Because I know if I get myself into this Word, it will strengthen me. 
You don't think God honors a little teeny bit of faith? Of course he does. You don't think he sees you when you're frail? Yeah, he totally does. And I want to give you some scriptures to write down, Ephesians 2, 5. I'm alive in Christ. Sometimes people look like they've been baptized in pickle juice. Nobody here, it's just for your neighbor. Um, Romans 8, 2. I am free with the law of sin and death. <clears throat> and then I want you to write down, oh, where is it, where is it, where is it? 1 Corinthians 2, 16 and Philippians 2, 5. I have the mind of Christ. Do you know you have the mind of Christ? How many people have worried in your thoughts, or your thoughts are anxious, or your, your mind can go all over about the woulda, shoulda, couldas? Woo, we have to just rein those things in. And I'm a visual person. Oh, well, let me write, give you this last one. 1 John 4, 4. The Spirit of God, who is greater than the enemy of the world, lives in me. The Spirit of God, who is greater than the enemy in the world, lives in you. And that might be hard for some people, you know, to get. Well, how does Jesus live in me? He gets in you and lives in you, A, because it's a promise of God, but he stays in us through the word. It doesn't happen by osmosis. So I believe my function today is just give you the very basic principles of the word of God, because if there was ever a time when we needed to live on this word, it is now in this time. Definitely now, economically, politically, etc. we can go down the gamut. But without this word, you're not going to make it. You just won't. You'll be discouraged. You'll be frustrated. You'll be irritated. It is this word. Well, I don't have time to read the Bible. There's always time to read it. Maybe turn off Facebook and get your face in this book. Because this word is going to change you. This word is going to challenge you. This word is alive. And I like the doves there. You know, it's not like the Holy Spirit, you know, is a bird or a dove. He descended as a dove. Could you imagine if we had a change that said, the Holy Spirit came up like an alligator. We'd all have to change our church logos. <laughs> It'd be totally different. No, he's not a cloud with an eyeball or fire. Those are demonstrations or manifestations of his spirit. So I'm a visual person, okay? So I'm going to give you a visual. I gave the ladies this, but I just feel to say it again today. If you imagined the Holy Spirit kind of a dove, just kind of sitting on your shoulder. What would you say and do if you knew he was right there all the time? How would you represent him? How would you act? If you always knew someone was constantly having a camera on you, like a reality show. Sometimes I think we actually have to make ourselves think like that, because if you knew you're being watched all the time, you'd be saying a heck of a lot of different stuff, wouldn't you? You're like, I didn't just flip you the bird. No, I didn't. I was waving. You just saw the wrong finger. I never said the S word. I said sugar. No, you didn't. We heard it loud and clear. You know, whatever it is, my F word was not forgiveness, man. I loved that word. And the Lord had to do a deep work in my heart. He had to really get the word down in me. But you know what? It wasn't that he was going to, the Holy Spirit, I'm going to pour it in you. I had to do my job. I had to do my part. I had to do my prerequisite. And that was, come, all you who are weary and heavy burden. Come, come, and I'll give you rest. Well, where am I going to come to? I'm going to come to the end of myself. And I'm going to say, I need this Bible. I need this word. And according to Matthew 6, it tells me not to worry because it adds nothing to my life. And then it gives you a template on how to stay in the Beatitudes, how to live in this Christian life. Fast. Fast a little bit. How many of you ever fasted? Yes. Sometimes it's miserable. And maybe you're thinking, oh, all right, I'm going to fast. I'm going to go on this 40 day, 40, 40 days, 40 night fast. Well, you know what? If you've never gone on a four-minute fast, you're never going to make 40 day one. So maybe you just need to fast a donut for the day and be like, woohoo, I fasted a donut. Yeah. Or I fasted, you know, Instagram for an hour. Or whatever it is, whatever you're choosing with intent that brings your flesh satisfaction, put that away and then put God time in that time. That's all we're saying. So if 10 minutes is what you do in the Word, maybe up it to 20. If you don't know how to read the pages and you just feel like it's just irritating to sit and read the Word, which it should never be, but then get a, go ahead on YouTube or Google or wherever. There's so many resources out there for you to be hearing. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing. That's how we stay out of worry. That's how we stay out of fret. We fast, we pray, and we believe God. Prayer is just talking to Jesus. So imagine the Holy Spirit like a, like a dove. And there are seasons in my life, ooh, Paul, I thought I was going to kill some people and tell God I found them dead. I'm like, Rah. and 
I could hear the Holy Spirit, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And then I could just hear this other voice, no, it's not. They're so irritating. Just go ahead and say it. A kind word turns away wrath. No, it doesn't. And before I knew it, I'm like, are you ever like get so confused? Not like I'm hearing other voices. You know, although there was a season when I felt like Sybil, her auntie, her grandma, her cousin, it was like, <laughs> like all up in there. And then before you know it, I lose my Christianity. I act like a fool. And then I want to blame other people because well, you don't understand. You made me do that. Nobody makes you do anything. Nobody. You're responsible for your own actions. Well, if you wouldn't have done that, that means you don't have any fruit of the spirit. That means you don't have any self-control. Nobody has the power to make you do anything. I don't care if they're in your face looking like with a machete of words. You literally can stand there and smile and not let it affect you. But it is hard, and yes, it is. It can be hard and devastating when life gives you and deals you a bad hand. But with God, the word says it is possible. It is possible to stand. It is possible to not worry. It is possible to fast. It is possible to hear God's voice in the middle of adversity. It is possible, but how bad do we want it? Because if you want something you never have, you're going to have to do something you've never done. And so maybe it's just a matter of saying, I'm going to take my time and I'm going to sit with Jesus. So imagine the Holy Spirit again, visualize himself just throughout this week. I'm going to sit, I'm going to get my God time, I've got the Holy Spirit, and then I go out through my work week, I've got the Holy Spirit with me, and then someone flips you off on the way to your job. You're like, the Holy Spirit's right there reminding you, hey, just keep on going. So your coworker ticks you off. Oh. I think I need to go over to the break room. You know, I don't know what you need to do, but just you're going to have to be intentional with this thing, really intentional to be like, it's like Jesus is up there going, I got a little bag of shush for you. Now shut it down. Don't say it. But a lot of times for me, probably nobody here, I'll tell you this to you, feel much better about yourself. I think my dub was right here and people would get on my nerves and I'm like, <laughs> my dub fell on the floor, it's dirty and it's muddy and I'm, I'm acting all like this. I'm like, oh, there's my dub. Let me pick him up off the floor and dust him off and he's lost some wings, but let me put him right back up here where he belongs. Yes, I have been like that sometimes, forgetting all the word that I knew forgetting the power of Jesus, forgetting that the same power that raised Christ from the dead works and operates inside of me. But yet my flesh got the best of me. Anybody? Any other takers? And then it's like, oh, man, Lord. Or Instagram. Sometimes I call it Insta Envy. You know, some of you just might have to delete some people. You're like, oh, I introduced them, and they are, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I see how they are. Or those people that fight battles on Instagram. Oh, Lord, please, give me a break. All you see is their highlighted life. You see what they want you to see. You don't see the fights. You don't see the chaos. You don't see the drama. You don't see the behind the scenes, do you? Sometimes that's not always reality. So if we're not careful, we have to give ourselves a reality check. And you get that by James. It says, what do you see when you look in the mirror? It's like if I were to look in the mirror, you're not my mirror, but if I were to look in the mirror and, I, oh, I got that out of place. I got this out of place. Oh, look, he's going to actually give me a mirror. I can see if I got something in my teeth. Do I really? Oh, I have a zip right there. I should have covered that up with some makeup. So I'm looking in the mirror, and I can see myself. And then I walk away, and I immediately forget what I look like. My job is to go back to the mirror and look at myself because I shine the light of the word. Thank you. That was an awesome analogy. I shine the word back on myself. I don't shine it on you deflecting. You know, people that say all kinds of crazy woulda, shoulda, coulda things about you, typically they're projecting their junk onto you. So why do you have to own it? Why do you have to wear it? Now, if there's truth in it, well, the truth that you know sets you free. And sometimes the truth hurts. That's why we got to speak a kind word in love, speak the truth in love, and it will bring a course of correction. So I don't know who needs to hear that, but just speak the truth in love. And if some people aren't getting it, how many of you believe in for family members? You've just been trying to talk to them, get them saved, and they're just not listening. It's like, Wah, 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 wah. We're just going to believe the Lord right now that he's just going to send um, angels. Yes, I believe in angels. The world has Harry Potter. We have angels. They've been given charge concerning us. They're not, not weird. You know, go look up on Copeland Ministries. I'll tell you a whole little dissertation about it. But I do believe that God can send his angels concerning us with scripture as we pray the word of God. They'll carry the word of God to our loved ones. 
So, Lord, for every loved one right now that needs the heart of Jesus, they need the heart of reconciliation, they need to be saved. Your word says that us and our whole household shall be saved. So we just believe for salvation in Jesus' name for every family member. Just send angels out on assignment for them. Send people to minister grace to them, some plant, some water, and some harvest. So I thank you in Jesus' name that our family members will be coming to this season to know you in Jesus' name. Amen my prayer my Grammy passed away a few weeks ago mm. I know I was really sad I was really close to my Graham Solomon called her Graham cracker and she was so cute she would always tell me she said um Christine I used to be on the bottle but now I'm on the Bible <laughs> and I'm like you go Grammy you know and my grandfather got saved in the 70s and accepted Jesus you know and became president of Habitat for Humanity like he just he felt like, man, I've been reborn. And so he did amazing things, and unfortunately he passed away of cancer. But why do I tell you that? Because they understood that when they became saved and when they became rescued, they were a new creature. And in their old age, they started over with Jesus. And if my grandparents can do that, dear goodness, we can do it. It's just an encouragement that those old people did it. <laughs> My gram would, you know, wheel carts over, you know, to, to laundry mats and whatnot. And, and I don't know, probably one person took all the things, but her heart was in the right place. And she would just put all these little, like, toiletries and everything with a sign there that said, Jesus loves you, please t feel free to take. And she just would make sure that someone would drive her up to the laundry mat and leave all these little toiletries for people that needed them. And I just thought, God, just bless her. Bless her heart. Bless her for doing that. But I really do believe God wants to just bless us, no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are. Your life still matters, and you still have things to do for Jesus, and people still need to be blessed by you. You're still someone's answer, sir. You have amazing stories, legacies, things that you've gone through that other people need to hear. Another generation needs to hear, and I don't think we should ever discredit one generation from the next. Never. We need to be a bridge builder. Always. Encourage one another. Ask someone who's more seasoned. I don't ever call people old. I say they're marinating. They're just marinated. That means they know a little bit more. They've been marinated. They're a little bit more seasoned, a little bit more tender in some things of life. So begin to ask people questions. Everyone has a story, and people matter, and people just want to be heard. And you know when you get out of your own circumstance, out of worry, fear, fret, and you get into the life of somebody else, you know God begins to work on your behalf. He begins to change things for you because you don't make it about yourself. You make it about other people. And that would be my challenge to you. If I could deposit anything, of course, we're going to pray here. But just pray that you would make a deposit in somebody else's life. That you truly can be a distribution center for Jesus. That life and hope and strength can be in somebody else because of your goodness. Because of what God has done for you. That you can be that kind of encouragement. Do you believe that? You know, and I just believe that just people in here who just needs to just read the word. When you read the word, how many of you want to read the word and get revelation? I just really feel that. We're going to pray for that right now, that when you read God's word, not only would you have a hunger for his word, but when you read it, it would be revelation and rhema. Because a lot of times when we go to read it, you get sleepy, you get tired, or you get your to-do list. But I believe God wants us to hear the words of God. So, Father, I thank you for every hand that's lifted that's saying, I want rhema, I want revelation, I want a hunger for your word. And when I read it, that I would understand your word. So, Lord, I just thank you that you see every hand that is lifted. And I thank you that it would be dynamite, dunamis power, that when they read the scriptures, even this week, that it would be illuminated to them. However it needs to be, if it's word pictures, or if it's just uh, an excitement in their heart, or if it feels like, even though they don't jump off the page, but if it feels like the words look like they might be jumping off the page and becoming manna, rhema to somebody, life. I thank you that it would be manifest and done in Jesus' name. They will not be weary. They will not fall asleep, but they are going to grow in you, Jesus. In your name, I pray, may it be done. Amen and amen. I just believe it to be done. I believe it to be done. God cares so very much about every single one of us that I want every good and perfect gift that comes from God. I want that to be a part of everything that we do. Do you believe that? Every part of what we do. You know, and I'm just going to believe God just for to make perfect everything that concerns you. Every concern that you've got outside of this room, that I'm just going to believe Jesus. He's working on your behalf right now for every person that you care about, for every person that you love, that you hold so dear to your heart. Does that make sense? That's just one little thing. I'm going to believe the Lord that he's going to just send people on assignment this week for all the prayers that you've been praying, for all the things that you've been believing God to do and to answer. I believe 
I just keep hearing that you have been watering and watering and watering, and God is going to send other people now to just plant and plant and plant, and you'll receive harvest, harvest, harvest for all those prayers. So, Lord, I just thank you for my precious sister. I thank you, Lord God, that you will perfect all the things that concern her and all these individuals that are needing a blessing and a breakthrough, Lord God, that her heart is for them. And, Lord, you hear every prayer, and I thank you, you aid and assist, and we receive testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. It's not like, uh, you know, anyway, praise the Lord. So I'm just going to believe God um, for encouragement for you and strength for you and just resources. You stay a tither. You stay a giver. You stay committed to the house of God. Those are our prerequisites. It's not, you know, beating you down. But if you stay faithful with what God asks you to do, you watch how he'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You watch how he'll encourage you in your resources and encourage you in your job and encourage and give you just just strength for your journey. Does that make sense? So, Lord, I just thank you for my friend, and I just thank you, Lord, that, that you know his heart, you know his thoughts, you know his coming and his going, you know when he talks to you, you know the things that are close to his heart, even questions that he doesn't quite understand, Lord, the questions he's been asking you lately. Father, I thank you that you are going to do exceedingly abundantly above. You're going to settle all the questions, and you're going to help him that he would hear more clearly in Jesus' name, that he's your sheep, he's your son, and he knows your voice. So I thank you that you seal it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Who just needs healing in their physical body? Let's just pray for physical healing right now. Lord, I just believe you for physical healing in people's bodies. I thank you right now for the healing power of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you. Uh, just uh, Carpal tunnel is being healed right now. Arthritis is being healed in Jesus' name. I thank you that um, uh, someone is just dealing with an issue in their liver. I thank you that it's being healed in Jesus' name. Lord, even in the fourth dimension, there are other parts and, and things that belong to the body of believers. But I thank you that may be appropriated by our faith. Lord, I even thank you that tendons are going to be able to straighten out. Lord, and, and I thank you where hands might even be crippled. I thank you that there's strength in them in Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, I just thank you that you are the one that sticks close beside us, a paraclete. And we know that Jesus is the healer. And we thank you, Jesus, that you are healing now. You're going to heal even emotional pain. You're going to heal anguish. I keep hearing anguish is being healed right now. You go to the emotions where people are dealing with anguish. And I thank you, Father, for healing backs and, and healing shoulders. Someone's got an issue in their left shoulder. Father, I thank you that you begin to heal that shoulder now. I thank you for digestive tracts. Someone's digestive tract is getting healed in Jesus' name. But you have to do your part. I just believe whoever that is, too, there's a natural part. And, and eat the right things. Alkaline your body. Do what your doctor's telling you to do. Take the right things. Do your part. Doctors are there for wisdom, but also use the supernatural power of God and believe him to transform that. So, Father, I just thank you for knees to be strong, knees to be strong, feet to be strong. Just whoever's suffering even in their feet, Lord, I thank you their feet are strengthened in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord, for that. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God cares and he wants us healed. You know, he wants us healed. It's like, um, can you get like two or three people on the instrument for me? Kind of like in closing as a demonstration for real quick as, and we're going to close. We can close out with music, but just as a demonstration. So when we get into God's presence, how many feel peace in God's presence? Right? Oh, and you could just like stay there all day long. At least I know I could. I'm like, don't disturb me. You know, that's where I would want to hit snooze a million times over just to rest. So just play something peaceful that just just, just brings us right there. Like, and you can just feel God's presence and you want to stay in that place. And you're like, just rest. You know, I'm a big word picture girl, so you could just imagine like a cool breeze and sitting by a river and just the, hearing the, the just the calmness of a river, and you can just hear, you know, birds chirping and the cool breeze and just even the sunlight hitting you on your face, and it's just calm, and it's rest, and I believe that's the season God wants us to enter into, is that season of rest, not striving and struggling and so busy. Dawn said it earlier, we're, we're so busy, and we come in with our stuff that we forget that he's still worthy. But he wants to just lavish on us. And he wants to give you rest. And that word rest, to be at peace, means to command results. It commands results. Because you're not worrying and you don't have your hands in the pot. And you're not the fixer. And then a lot of times you feel like that. And then play something that's totally messing up the whole flow right now. Just really a mess. Okay, 
everything else sucks. Is that not irritating? Right? You're like, oh, I was, I just heard the cuckoo. I heard this bird and the chirping and the sun. And <laughs> okay, that chaos. Do it one more time. Sometimes, okay, that is so irritating. But, <laughs> but when we worry and when we get frustrated and we forget that he's a prince of peace, not a prince of pressure, that's what our insides sound like. You might not hear it, and sometimes you can't quite put your finger on it, but we need the peace of God. You can just play whatever you want to play if you want to stay up there and play. We're going to close out soon anyway. But, you know, and don't bring me too far in the basement, you know, make it all too, too, we don't want sad music. We want happy, joyful music. They're so anointed. You guys have got amazing people here. But I just really believe that Jesus just cares so very much about every one of us. And today, on a Sunday morning, he wants you to walk out encouraged. He wants you to walk out with joy. He wants you to know that no matter what you've got on your mind, God cares so very much about you. He didn't want you just to come and take up space in church, but he is going to ask you to do a few things, and that means kind of out with the old and in with the new. What do you mean out with the old? I don't know. Maybe it's stinking thinking. Maybe it's thinking woulda, shoulda, coulda. Maybe it's just being a complainer or negative. Nobody in here is probably for your neighbor, right? Maybe it's just going ahead and having thoughts that you think, um, I'm, I'm done with my life. I'm just... I'm going to go to church because it's just what I do. How about change your perspective? I'm going to go to church so I can get filled up so that when I get outside these four walls, I'm going to have a word in due season for somebody. Because the Bible says that when I open my mouth, my words would minister grace to those that hear it. And we're going to push past our own circumstance and give into the life of somebody else because they really matter. They really matter. Like I know I met you yesterday and I look forward to meeting your, your daughters. But I really believe that the Lord just even wants to just challenge you just in your journey with Jesus just give you things that maybe where you believe for his power to be so real and so manifest that he will make himself so real to you as real as I'm sitting here talking to you. Does that make sense, my friend? And I'm just going to ask God to just overshadow you and flood you with goodness, flood you with strength, flood you with peace. And a flood, when a flood comes in, it overtakes everything. Not a stream, but I just keep hearing a flood, a flood. Oh, oh, God is just saying, I've got reservoir for you. I have so much reservoir of wisdom and reservoir for businesses and reservoir that everything that even in your past, things that you might have done that you thought, oh, well, that maybe didn't please God. Well, you didn't know then. You weren't serving God. I hear God, he's just changing your mindset, changing your thought pattern, sir, just out with the old and in with the new, that you're going to have uncommon, even creativity. And I just hear intuition, which is discernment, which is the Holy Spirit wanting to give you discernment to know when to stop to go left, when to go right, when to sign that contract, how, how do I even help my girls, and how do I do this, and, and, and what about a mom, and what about, and all these little questions, God is just saying, settle all of that, because he's going to make perfect everything that concerns you, and it's like I can, it's an old song, and I'm not going to sing it, but I just can see the hand of Jesus just right on you, and, and I just hear, hear the words, you can look it up later, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, a long life's narrow. He's always there, right beside you. You're never alone, but Jesus is right there for you, and it's just an amazing journey with him. He's charging you up with a supernatural abundance. And even one day when you even go back to your nation, I hear the Lord say that there will be those that will stand in awe of, is that the same person? Is that the same? And they have a nickname for you. I, I don't know it, but I can see it. And, and they're just going to say, is that so-and-so? Is that... And you'll say, oh, let me tell you, let me tell you. And I hear the Lord say, don't worry about all of that. Don't worry about back home. I've got home taken care of. But I work on your home front, and I will take care of the home in Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for your goodness, and I thank you for your grace. Lord, I thank you for my sister. Lord, I thank you just for her body, that it is strong. And I just keep hearing, whose report will we believe? We believe the report of the Lord. We believe the report of the Lord that you are strong, that your latter shall be greater than your former, that God is for you and not against you. He will make perfect everything concerning you. Lord, I thank you that her body is strong and strengthened, that her heart is strong and steadfast in you, unmovable, Jesus. And I thank you, Father. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your goodness. And sir, is it okay if I talk to you and pray for you? 
and I just hear God, and he's just smiling right on you right now, and I just hear him say, you know, that's old, that's just in the past, God remembers nothing from the past, that's how amazing he is, he just wants to cultivate a new relationship with you, and you know, I was a grouchy, yucky person without Jesus, and when I came to Jesus, sometimes my past wants to remind me of who I used to be, and I just believe the Lord's saying, don't remind yourself anymore of who you used to be, you are loved, you are cherished, you have not gone too far and made too many mistakes that God cannot redeem every single thing that concerns you. He loves you so very much. And it's just, if you could just get a visual of a very clean slate of the love of God, of the love of God. And, and how many kids do you have? You each have one. So I'm going to pray for your children. Just see children. And, and, and don't be upset. There's nothing you could have, would have, should have done would have changed the direction of any of their choices, okay? That's just in the hands of God. They're responsible for their own choices. But Lord, I just thank you for those children. And Lord, I thank you where they're trying to shift blame. I just thank you that you just shine the light on their own heart, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Can I put my hand on your shoulder, sir? And Jesus, I just thank you that your son would feel, that he would feel your presence, Lord, today that he would know how much you're for him and not against him, that he would feel your love today in an uncommon way that just overshadows him, Lord. And I hear you saying to just vacation and take the breaks that are needed and enjoy this latter part of your life. You don't have to put yourself in a box from the past. God says live outside the box, do and be, because in you you live and move and have my being. And I thank you, Lord, for supernatural strength for my friend today, Lord, supernatural strength. And Father, I just thank you for your man of God. I thank you just for uncommon blessings in this season. Lord, I thank you for uncommon. I just keep hearing uncommon blessings that you want to unlock to him. Things that are important to his heart, Lord. Things that he, he's good with his hands and crafty and skilled. And, and Lord, as crafty, as skilled, and, and, and as he is, Lord, uh, just a good craftsman. Lord, I hear you say you are the best craftsman ever. And you can skillfully work on all the things that concern him because you care about him so very much things he just keeps in his heart between you and him, Lord, you hear them, and you want to do exceedingly abundantly above, and so I thank you for doing that, doing that because you love us so very much. God just cares so very much about us, and he loves, loves, loves us. You're like, oh, he loves us. Do you play sports at all? Yeah? Um, do you, what do you want to do? Do you want to stay in sports like the rest of your life, or it's okay if you're good? You're still deciding. Well, can we pray that God will show you? That you'll excel in the sport arena, whatever you do, whether you play football, ball, whether you, whether you basketball, that's awesome. I mean, just pray for that and pray that God will show you the future of where you want to go. Because, you know, you can never do this thing without Jesus. This might be unsolicited advice, but is it okay if I talk to you? So I just want you to remember this little silly blonde-haired girl saying, don't ever go back to things of this world. They have nothing for you. Party people have nothing for you. People that aren't living for Jesus, they might be nice and have an awesome heart, but they're never going to fulfill you. Only God's presence is going to fulfill you, and only God's Word, God's Word will fulfill you. He'll help you feel significant. He'll help you feel purpose. He'll help you when you don't understand. It will be the Scriptures. Get a version of the Bible you like to hear and begin to listen to that. And I just keep hearing just Psalm 91. So you might want to go home later and look up Psalm 91 and maybe even the Passion Translation. That's a really good version. And just begin to read it out loud and insert your name in there. Because God cares so very much about you. You're not forgotten. He loves you and he wants the very best for you. He'll use you in mighty ways if you just say a yes. And that's the cool thing about the dove, the Holy Spirit. He never shoves himself on you. He just presents something to you. And then he's a gentleman, so he waits for us to say our yes. So, Father, I just thank you for my friend. What is your first name? Taylor. I thank you for Taylor. Lord, and I just thank you that he's strong, strong in his sports and strong in what he does and strong for you. And, Lord, I just hear you wanting to go right to his heart, right to his heart. Now, I'm not going to put my hand there, but I'm just going to, I can see Jesus' hand right there just a hand right on your heart. And Lord, I just thank you that you will heal. I just keep healing. Heal. You will show what needs to be shown. You will illuminate what needs to be illuminated, that he's not forgotten. 
that Taylor is not alone, that Taylor is valuable, Taylor is significant, that I thank you that you show him the pathway of his future, Lord. Whether it be basketball forever, I don't know, God, but I thank you that not only does he excel in this season in this sport, but I thank you, Lord, that you begin to unfold the planning pages of his destiny and show him what is ahead, Lord. Give him right friends, godly influences, protect him, put a protective hedge around him, Lord, that he'll hear you, that today he will know, God, that you love him very much. And Lord, even I can just see you just in a car and just kind of driving and contemplative. And even when you just stop, it's like you look around and all the questions, but I just see the Lord is settling all those questions and giving you yes, no, okay, wait. He's not gonna play a game with you. Like other people have maybe played a game with you. And so you dive into sports because you're really good at it. But I hear the Lord say, he's not gonna play an emotional game with you. He's gonna show you exactly what you need he cares about you so very much. In Jesus' name, amen. Does that make sense to you, my friend? Have a high five. Thanks. So I just want you to be encouraged. I want you to be charged up in the next few minutes. I'm just going to pray for a few people. Is that okay, church? Just a few more people. And, and just be, be mindful today that you're someone's answer. Like when you go to the grocery store or you go to eat lunch or wherever you are today, you're someone's answer. So be listening with intent. You know you can get downloads from Jesus just as practical. Just like the baby cries, you pick up the baby. That's how practical you can get downloads from Jesus. They can just, they come conversationally sometimes in your head and you don't need to say, thus say the Lord, God is saying. You know, we don't need to be like that. You can just encourage somebody, right? Encourage somebody where you are. Is it okay if I pray for you? Yeah, I just, I just believe the Lord just wants to encourage you. And you know, this might sound weird, but this is what I just see. I'm just gonna tell you. I see Jesus just kind of hanging out and just like kind of tapping me there and be like, what's up? I wanna tell you some things. I wanna talk to you about the future. Yep, I'm, I want to talk to you about the things that you're dealing with in your past. I want to talk to you about where you're going. Yep, and I'm just going to hang out. And he's just an awesome friend. And I'm going to believe that Jesus is going to be really real to you because I just see him. He's, he's a friend that's like, he's closer than a brother. If you can, like, you know what Velcro is, right? Just kind of stitch, right? Just see Jesus like that, just sticking so close beside you. He's never going to leave you. He doesn't. And he always just waits to see if we're going to let him in. And are you willing to let him in totally into every area? All right, I'm going to put my hand on your shoulder. Is that all right? Jesus, I just thank you for my friend. And I thank you, Lord. He lets you in 100%. And so I ask you, God, that you talk to him. He's going to hear you in deeper ways. Lord, he's not going to doubt that he hears from you because he's your son. And you know him. You created him. He's not a mistake. Nothing that he does was a mistake. We all make mistakes. But, God, I just hear you wanting to encourage him today, to let him know that he is exactly where you need him to be. Lord, and I thank you that you're going to show him his future. You're going to show him business ideas. You're going to show him creative ways, Lord. And, and I believe you are very destined for wealth. I just really see that. I see you're destined for wealth, that you can make a difference in your family. You can make a difference. I hear the Lord say you want to leave an inheritance, and nothing wrong with the people in your past or the people that raised you. I'm not saying that, but I hear the Lord say you're nothing like those that have gone before you. God is going to give you a different template and show you how to erase and recompense and move forward for grace, for goodness, for strength. Lord, bless his hands, bless the fruit of what he does, and I thank you for encouraging him today to letting him know that, Lord, even I see even over the next 17 days something uncommon for him. Lord, I just hear 17 days, whatever this is, only you know. But I thank you, you take him on this journey with you, Lord, and show him exceedingly abundantly above blessings that you want to rock his world and show him how much you adore him, God. And you're not angry, you're not mean, you care deeply, and you're going to do good things for my friend in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just never, never, never forget, never, never, never forget how much God is for you. Never forget, just somebody else over here I'm going to pray for, and, um, you know, then we, we need to go. And, Anne Marie, I am praying for you, not because we personally talked, but because I just feel Jesus right now. And we can still talk about the other things we were already talking about. But, you know, I'm just going to believe the fire of God that's going to keep you exactly where you need to be kept. Now, you could be mad at me all you want, but I'm going to pray that if you put your foot in the wrong place, that you'll know that you'll know that you'll know you're not supposed to go there because you've got to call a God on your life, girl. And I care about you very much. And I feel the presence of the Lord that wants to arrest your heart. There is there no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And when the anointing is here, you know the anointing. You step into the anointing. And you make choices.
that are going to be for God or against God. But I hear the Lord say, make God choices because he's given you gifts. And trust, take it from me. There's a long time when I made stupid choices and I felt the Holy Spirit so far from me because of my dumb decisions and it was miserable. But I never want what I feel now to ever be taken from me again. And I'm going to believe that for you, okay? So Father, I thank you. I thank you for her life. And I pray the fire of God over her, the fire of God from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord. And I thank you that there is no distance in the spirit and there's nothing that she has done, nothing that is too far that she cannot reset right now today, God. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And I thank you for a wall of fire around her today. Lord, she is precious and she is loved and she's significant and she is valuable. So I thank you for the Holy Spirit to just lavish on her today, to let her know how loved she is, God, and how much she's cared for. And Lord, I hear you say how much she's needed in the kingdom. And so I thank you in Jesus' name for that. I speak life and empowerment and blessings, and I thank you no weapon formed against her will prosper. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And Father, I just thank you for every other individual here. I thank you for the power of God. One last person I just really keep feeling like to pray for. And is it okay if I pray for you, friend? Um, I don't know what you do for a living, but I just hear the Lord wants to just bless what you do and, and increase what you do. And But more importantly than that, he just wants to show you some really awesome things through the scriptures. So the next time you read the word, just maybe sit for a second and you might hear a book of the Bible. Maybe go to the front of the Bible. You know, sometimes we can kind of forget all the different ones. So you go to the front of the Bible and just kind of look. And one is just, I just know it, it's just going to jump right out at you. And then you go right to that book, and, and you're just going to be led by God exactly to know where to go. It's going to be like a road map for you because God really cares about you. So, Lord, I thank you. Um, I thank you for your son. I thank you. He's a hard worker. He's courageous. He's strong. He's significant. I, I really hear the word significant. It's like I could just see big significance like it's written all over you. Lord, that he's significant, he's valuable, and he's important to the kingdom, and he really matters. And Lord, I just thank you that whatever matters to your heart matters big to him. And so I just thank you that the next time that he reads the word, he'll know exactly that it's from you, God, exactly where he's going. And that the Lord just wants to draw you into a closer relationship. He's never, ever, ever going to leave you. So don't ever second guess that. He just wants to draw you into a closer place with him. Kind of like eagles. You know, they soar and they fly and sometimes eagles go alone. Not everyone goes where the eagle goes. The rest of them are like, caw, caw, like little chickens. They don't want to go there. But you're, you're made to be an eagle. You're made to soar. And so, Lord, I just thank you for that. I thank you in Jesus' name that my friend soars high in the Lord and goes high. And, Father, I pray a blessing over this household, a blessing over the young people, a blessing even over you, whatever you want to do, whatever she wants to do, whatever, whatever you put your hands to will be prosperous and successful. Okay, honey? Don't worry. Can you just, like, see worry just kind of go right there? Can you just visualize even the words? Don't hang on to that. Trust me. I just tend you down on the yucky pathway, okay? Put all the worry here. Just see it all the garbage go. Visualize it. Sometimes we literally have to visualize the worry. Just go. Okay? So visualize that just going. And don't think that, that things are a surprise to the Lord. The Lord knows everything that we go through. Nothing is hidden from Him. So I'm just going to believe God to strengthen you, to just encourage you, to give you joy. You might want to go ahead and get some good sermons in you that talk about the love and the joy of Jesus. You might want to turn up some music when you go home and say, excuse me, people, hello, I'm going to get a little dance on. Do you know literally when you begin to move your body and dance, it shakes off sorrow because you're physically doing something that's different and it tells your natural body, I'm shaking myself out of sorrow. I'm shaking myself out of misery. I'm shaking myself out of pain and regret. I'm shaking myself of what the enemy thought he had me. He cannot have me because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. God loves loves you, you are going to be okay, you are not going to stay stuck, I just command that spirit to go in Jesus' name, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, so Lord, I thank you for every church member, I thank you for your spirit, and my prayer is that you would be so real to every person here today, Lord, so real to them, that they will never doubt from this moment on that you are real, that you are good, that you are for them and not against them. I bless them in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for their value and their significance. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. I love y'all and I'll be at the back.